This here Giga Coaster has a 320 foot drop that goes as high as the skyscrapers that you see in the background and traverses at max speeds of 100 miles per hour across a 2.1 kilometer track length spanning the entire urban city. This here is the epic coaster city adventure that you've never experienced before here on this channel. Doing something different, doing something unique love to see it this here creation this theme park takes a spin on planet coaster bringing it to the urban city and then adding a touch of theming really incredible unique theme park design as you can see for the b-roll it looks absolutely stunning it's doing something different and that is what i love to see so definitely one you're not going to want to miss out on so stay tuned and we'll get right on into it Hey yo, my Planet Coaster friends, Johnny5 Alive here, and welcome back to another episode of Park Spotlight. Today we're gonna be looking at Urban Fantasy, created by Branjo, an advanced builder in this community, and here they say, Hey Johnny and all of Channel 5, I have finally actually finished construction of my epic coaster city. I really appreciate all the hard work you've done keeping myself and the rest of the Planko fans entertained and inspired with your incredible content showcasing most exciting creations this community has to offer. Well, thank you so much. That means a lot to me. Really appreciate that. They go on to say this here is urban fantasy built to explore many themes in densely packed theme park city just as any city has cultural areas and unique buildings i have strived to pack as much into this island as possible to keep it exciting other than my selection of real world themes i have mixed in quite a few fantastical ones as well if the names wasn't obvious <laughs> and any feedback is always welcome ride coasters however you wish track view is always the smoothest and arms free <laughs> Chase View is cool on the Pink Penguin Incorporated. Oh. <laughs> Make sure to check out both the park at day and night. I have spent over a year working on this park and I hope all my guests enjoy riding my coasters. Wow, there it is. Uh, I got a lot of B-roll for this one. There was a lot of exciting things to look at in this park in terms of panning the camera around. And I even added a little bit of some nighttime shots. I'm not sure if you guys have seen those yet uh, based off how much I've gotten, but uh, I think one of the allures of this park is how transformative it becomes between the day experience and the night experience. I almost want to say the night experience is more captivating than the day and that is very rare. Uh, it's so well lit that I think this is going to offer some really uh, immersive and unique experiences and for the most part I think we're going to be riding every single coaster at both day and night because they both offer something very very unique. So I'm already super excited about this one as you could probably tell and I love where the direct Brancho took this so let's delay no further just get right on into it okay welcome welcome ladies and gentlemen here we are in the parking lot of the I guess it's an island but looking good I love all the palm trees uh, another empty parking lot we have two cars back there some tour buses around there at the back um, but really uh, nice garden work already we have the uh, team steam what's this there's like a button I can push did it do anything? Whoa! Yo! That's cool. Oh, look at this. We get to choose if we're Team Steam or Team Pirate. So it zaps the pirate ship. Boom. And then if we're Team Pirate, it shoots the cannons. <laughs> That's actually kind of rad. Well done. I mean, it's, it's like... A fun way to do a sequencer and a fireworks show without making me sit here for like 30 minutes watching your fireworks show that's not time to music or anything. <laughs> and it's something fun for us to interact with before we even take a single step into your park. Uh, I like I like this concept. I want to see more fun, interactive little things like this uh, out front of your park. Something just to get us a little bit excited before we even step foot into the park. So let me know down in the comments below. Are you Team Pirate? Or are you Team Steam? Oh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. I think I'm going to be Team Pirate. It's underrated. And even though 
steampunk is not native to Planet Coaster and you have to build it all yourself and do it all manually, uh, it gets used a lot. It's very common to see it. Oh, look at this. We can get our tickets from a pink penguin. Get our season pass. Look at that. Very nice. Yeah, I'm Team Pirate, 100%. Let's go. So, <laughs> urban fantasy. Not only are we, are we embarking into a urban city, but it has been readjusted, as you can see, to include that of Caribbean skyscrapers. Have you ever seen anything like that before? I certainly haven't. That's uh, pretty cool. Really neat bridge you got built here. Um, again, this is gonna be one that we're gonna have to toggle between night and day. I feel like coming through here, this is such a, a captivating atmosphere. We almost have to appreciate it at night. All the little pot lights lighting up the bridge here. And look at all the different colors going on there. The soft gradients of light, the crazy color choices and hues. Uh, it's phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. So uh, I want to see a little bit of everything between <clears throat> both day and night. Because uh, some cities come alive at night. Some look good at daytime. Depends on where you're at. Las Vegas being one of the nighttime ones that excels pretty much only at night. <laughs> oh, wow. So we are in the steampunk land of the urban city. There's mechs. There's a steam beast. There's a, a giant airship up there. And in the very, very background, you get a bit more of a modern city with all the skyscrapers and stuff like that. This is so cool. Oh my goodness. As mentioned, we're gonna be riding most of these coasters, if not all of them, at both day and night because the setting is so nice. Like, uh, I don't know how long this coaster stretches out for, but it's gonna give us a good look at pretty much all of the aesthetics, all of the theming, and all of the details that this creator, Branjo, has put into the surrounding area of the Steam Park. Steam Park Park. Steam part of the park? <laughs> you guys know what I'm trying to say. So, uh, if I was walking around too much at night, at least uh, riding a coaster during the day should give us another look at everything else. Wow, look at the uh, coaster track here. It's uh, pretty insane looking. Steam Beast. I'm thinking it's a launch coaster, right? Yeah, definitely a launch coaster. 1.4 kilometers in length, 77 miles per hour, six airtime counts, a little bit of airtime in seconds, four inversions, green across the board. Everything's looking good here. Uh, I think we're definitely gonna go track view for this one. Mm, maybe for the daytime. How's this look? Let's try this for night and then we'll go uh, track view for day. A little bit more of an authentic experience. I had reshade off this whole freaking time, or maybe not. Maybe I just turned it off. I don't know. Here we go, flight test. Let's check it out. Is incredible. Good googly moogly. 
Uh, if you guys are wondering why we're getting hit in the head by things, the camera is actually positioned higher than the uh, actual guests themselves for the uh, POV that we experienced there. Uh, Branjo did say they were open to some feedback. I didn't notice until at, uh, we were on the coaster that you have this kind of lava flame theme going on here. Uh, I would have liked to see some gurgling lava, some fire and flames and gurgling splashy lava. I think the coaster's taking off, uh, coming out of the terrain here as the coaster is going by. But yeah, we'll have less uh, of our head getting chopped off if we go into track view, and that is what we're going to do. So it's just taking off now. We're going to go track view, reshade back on, and let's go. This is just the first coaster of the day. We're just getting started and boy, oh boy, that is crazy. Uh, 76 seconds in duration. These are experiences and I love that. Like taking us basically through your entire steampunk area, uh, a, a complete explorative coaster. And I love it. Absolutely love it. Um, it's hard to decide which I liked better both day or night. And I think for that coaster in particular, like I said, I everything looks so good at night. And I felt like the coaster didn't match the atmosphere of the surrounding areas. And what I mean by that is, like I said, if there was more of the fire, the flames, the lava, more of that redness, uh, orange hues and, and bright yellows and, and different lights turning on while we were on that experience to kind of give us that molten uh, fear effect that it's trying to kind of symbol symbolize. I think it would have made it like a lot more like wow factor at night. Whereas, like, it was really well lit, but it, it wasn't, like, um, thematically lit, right? It didn't have any, like, triggered events or anything really pushing it over the top. Whereas, uh, daytime, I could just see everything a lot more clear. The fidelity was really nice. The, the sunlight coming in. Everything just looked really beautiful. So, um, if we're just gonna go on the more plain side, where it's like, this is your one consistent lighting... This is the atmosphere. I think I preferred that of the daytime, um, personally, but uh, still looked incredible at night. I think uh, it would have just been really cool had uh, had it had a little bit more of the action-packed effects that uh, give you those wow moments at nighttime. But really good so far. Don't really ride uh, these that often. Ferris wheels. But it's at the end of the park. It gives us a cool view of things. So might as well check it out while we're here. But let's keep on keeping on. What do we have here? Is this a parkade? With no cars in it. <laughs> but that's what it is indeed. Makes sense. It is an urban fantasy after all. Very, very cool. I like the launch on the uh, steampunk coaster, by the way, too. That looks really nice. Little glass windows on there. Got a little bit of an old town vibe going on here. Let's see if we can squeeze on through. Oh, look at this. The roads are cleared off. But the guests get to walk around. Now, look at this. I love the uh, height and scale of everything, right? We're really feeling the presence of the city as we're walking through. That's really, really cool. We got a plane now, a showstopper. Is there a ride, a dark ride, some sort of attraction for us to experience in the showstopper? If we're going into a cinema, we should probably go in at night. Ooh. Get ourselves some popcorn. What kind of movies we got playing in here? Return of the Spider. 
I don't remember downloading custom images. Is that like a default thing in the game or a... Something rather? What is this? Secret Agent Mouse. And then we have the, uh... The Zany Professor 2. So another bit of feedback is never really... You should never really put black text on black signs. Uh, probably... I mean, anything would have worked. Anything opposite in, uh... Contrast. This is a little bit better. You got black on red. But I still would have gone with a more vibrant red. Um, because at nighttime, they're pretty much impossible to make out. But we do have a queue here. Showstopper, 45-minute wait. So it's going to be at least a 45-minute video, according to my estimation. <laughs> uh, the dimensional hopping thrill king that rips right through the screen. Okay. What? Are we going to actually rip through a screen? That would uh, that would be awesome. Oh my goodness. This is uh, quite quaint and cozy. Showstoppers. What do we got going on here? They're filming a movie up here. Uh, this is kind of cool. Whoa. We have a Giga Coaster. Uh, this is the one I talked about in the introduction. 98 miles per hour, uh, 2.1 kilometers in length. And it says the biggest drop is 100 meters, which is roughly, I think, 320 feet or so. Lots of airtime on this. Pretty crazy. This is the one that you all tuned in for. We're getting it done early here. Uh, we're at nighttime. I'm going to do the same thing as before, I think. And then we'll do the track view at daytime. I feel like the track view gives you the best on-ride experience, the best feel for the actual coaster layout and track. And because you can see a lot more at the daytime, it's it's better to appreciate the track view during the day. Whereas this can be more of an experience. Seeing them all screaming, their hands up, you got all the lights, all of that crazy zaniness. What the heck? Somebody just fell off the cliff. That's not good. <laughs> all right, here we freaking go. I think we're filming a movie. Is that what's going on here? Someone fell off the cliff for the... It was a stunt double. Amazing. Oh, look at that. Get the moon right there. Very nice. Wow. This is so cool. Seeing the buildings inside. Uh, the coaster is not even as tall as these buildings, but we're getting to the top. Look at there's an action scene. The cop got shot. Oh my goodness! Why are they on the roof? <laughs> this is amazing! Let's go! Freaking Toledo's! That was epic! And, uh, this point of view was a great decision because, uh, Brancho decided to put area lights across the entirety of the track. And what happened was the area light was picking up off the coaster train itself, and it was actually creating a strobing effect going across the entire train and all the guests the entire duration throughout that coaster. And it was just like a- it was like a light show at night. And that's kind of what I was hoping for a little bit more from the previous coaster that we saw, but more in the environment area. And I think that did the job there for me, making a, a pretty fantastical night experience. Let's check it out during the daytime and uh, look at all the sunlight coming in. It's hitting that track, uh, the surrounding environment. It's looking just gorgeous. The reflections off the water. There's the falling guy there looking beautiful at the daytime. This is going to be a completely different experience. Whoa, there's a rolling car. Wow, I didn't see that the first time around. So let's see what kind of new details 
that we can spot this time around. There's that shootout at the very top of the building there. <laughs> that is wild. Sunlight's coming in, casting massive shadows over the city with these big buildings. This is just epic. To build entire cities uh, and um, skyscrapers and fit them into a park without them looking out of place and wonky is very, very, very difficult. And I kind of know firsthand from Project Planko. And uh, this is looking incredible for a theme park. Urban fantasy, let's go. Wow, that is freaking remarkable. I, uh, I think I'm going to say I preferred the daytime on this as well, just because you've done such a fantastic job at creating this uh, really unique urban fantasy city. And going through that pirate area, I got to see so many more visuals as we're like diving through that pirate ship and all of the surrounding areas around us. I could really see it a lot better at daytime. And it really, I got to see truly how many details you have crammed into this creation. So uh, the nighttime was an experience. It it was awesome and I liked how different the two were yeah this is kind of incredible I had me thinking like Project Planko what we did uh, we built a giant city in the middle of the park and that was all of our urban city and all that but what you've done is you kind of blended it so like we had a pirate off to the side we have fantasy off the side we have sci-fi off to the side we have all these different sections that are like this is a themed area you're no longer in the city whereas this in this park you are in the city for the entirety of the park but you still go to pirate you still go to fantasy and you still you take a trip through all of these different themed areas but the city never ends so you've uh, found a way to create pirate as urban as city you found a way to do fantasy as city and i think that's just like a really interesting take which again as i mentioned at the top of the video in the introduction like nothing i've ever seen before this is a really cool area i like this building with all the ivy coming down on it. Really nice architecture. Everywhere we look, it's filled in. There's not like a lot of gaps between the buildings. There's always something kind of hanging off in the backdrop there. And uh, that way you have a lot of really great compositions and it's not feeling like nothing's been left out. I'm, uh, it's it's very immersive for that, that one reason alone. See this building here, it's like we're kind of embarking into something sci-fi. I'm assuming this is, an, oh no, I was gonna say an exit, but people are walking down here. Okay, so there's uh, an exit and an entrance. So yeah, uh, we go into this building and now we're in like the world of sci-fi. And that's what I was saying that I like about this park. It's uh, mixing the different themes that you get within the game all over like a, a base coat of one theme. Your base coat is that of urban uh, city. And then you've like accentuated that with like a touch of this and a touch of that. And that's like great. And it has me thinking, what else can you do that with? What kind of theme can you start with and then add to, right? You don't really get a lot of these like dual blended themes in this game. It's just like, usually it's like just the fired area. W what can you mix together? How can you hybridize different themes in this game? And uh, Branjo's bringing that to our attention here with the urban. And that's something I've never seen before over 600 episodes of Park Spotlight. Track length is 1.6 kilometers, 83 miles per hour, 55 meters is the biggest drop. Uh, four airtime counts, three inversions, and it's the Pink Penguin Incorporated. I've been forgetting to uh, read the titles and it's a winged launch coaster. We're gonna start things off in seat view. Let's go. Bam 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 b
I'm already feeling the vibes. Oh my freaking god, what is this? Wow! <laughs> this is bananas! Whoa! I did not ex- Wow! I did not expect any of this and it just gets better! Oh my freaking goodness, good googly freaking moogly. What am I witnessing right now? Wow! <laughs> I did not expect any of this. This is, uh, there's a city beneath the city. Pink Penguin Army! Oh my god, it's a Pink Penguin nightclub. How dare you? Oh, wowzers. What is going on here? <laughs> now we're in the Matrix! Wow. I usually don't commentate on coasters. I cannot help myself here. This is wild. Absolutely wild. What a fun experience. Yo. Yo. Wow, freaking wait! That was something different. Who would have expected any of that? I thought this was gonna go outside into the city. Unfortunately, this is just something we can't do at daytime. Fortunately, but unfortunately, because I like, I kind of want to uh, experience it again, but like, wowzers. That was, that's the experience. It is what it is. You got me screaming over the entire thing. So sorry for the no commentary POV on that one. Actually, I'll give you guys a no commentary POV track view. Yeah, I can do that. Get to really feel the track. Okay, I'll shut up. Shut up. This is just bananas wild. <laughs> it's like if re uh, if reality became a theme park, that's what this is. It's like your modern city, your local city. For me, that would be, uh, well, it would have normally been uh, Vancouver, but now it is Kelowna. But Vancouver is much more of a, a, a larger urban city than Kelowna is. But it's like if you took Vancouver and turned it into a theme park, that's what I'm, that's the vibes I'm getting today. And it is freaking exceptional. I love it. Uh, as I was previously talking about saying now, you know, you took urban and converted into a theme park. And that's kind of similar to that of what we did with Planet Coaster or uh, Project Planko, the park that we're working on, uh, except for like more sectioned off. But the whole concept of it is like based around a city. As I was like talking about that, I, I remember thinking to myself, but the only th theme, the only thing that I didn't see here that is kind of a common theme in Planet Coaster is that of the sci-fi. And I was like, oh, that's a bit unfortunate that when I was doing the B-roll, I didn't see any sci-fi. And to, little to my surprise, there it was, underground, a whole city underneath the city. So I got some flat rides tucked off to the side. Uh, not much going on here, a dead end, but I love 
the architecture on these little houses up on the hill. Very, very cool. Definitely want to take a look at those and appreciate them. We got a little bit of a back alley pass through that takes us into Chinatown. Look at this. I have a feeling this is going to be stunning at nighttime. So let's, ooh, yeah. It's the red light district. <laughs> these uh, pot lights are kind of hard to recolor and make look good. I think you have to like make place them and then add another light inside of them so you take that right color it red and they put an air a, a yellow area light inside of it and then i think you get a gradient glow come off of it and uh i myself have messed around with them in project blanco and i came to that discovery on my own i was like okay like these are crappy by default they need a little bit of uh help we can get some crawfish and jambalaya Look at this. I like the car seats. Fantastic little diner here. I love the attention to detail on all the interiors. This entire park is like a, a never-ending main street from Disneyland. But the themes kind of change. The building, the architecture, and uh, the surrounding areas kind of change as we go deeper and deeper and deeper. All right. Leven Sep Bakery on the corner here. Look at this. That is a sick shot right there. Love the way you lit the buildings. They look incredible. Who would have thought? Uh, this is really, really fun. I've seen some city parks in the past and been underwhelmed. I've seen people do sections like this that looked really good, but not an entire theme park. Even Project Planko, I mean, I gotta say, like, we have a really immersive city but it's not as vast and sprawling as this this is really neat i mean i'm really into this just these like fun little homes that you got here um everything's really really cool uh we passed through that chinatown really really quickly didn't we that was a brief little area wow they're very uh saturated and colorful buildings during the daytime I feel like I missed something over here, so I want to come back. No, I didn't. That's it. Well, we could pass through a different way now. Should there be a junior dragon? I thought I saw, like, a junior coaster around here. Dragon Watcher's Bar. It's cool. What's going on over here? Yeah, that pink penguin experience was something else. So that we have the medieval village. I'm gonna zoom back uh, through the building and back to here because I was really intrigued about this. Something was leading me over here and I wanna complete that adventure. What lies below? I don't know. I well, guess we'll find out. What lies below? Well, it appears we're going into the medieval village anyways. A little bit strange that only the bravest will accept this quest. Uh, I think we have to go back tonight again. Um, what secrets will we discover? Feels a little strange that the queue for this is in the city, but then there was like a a welcoming sign to that part of the, the fantasy area. Why is the entrance not over there? Well... Doesn't matter. At the end of the day, we're going to find out what lays below. Lies below? Wow. All right. What we got going on here? It looks like it's a drive tire launch coaster. Yes, indeedly do. And it's green across the board. 1.6 kilometers in length, 672 miles per hour. Lots of air time on this, uh, a 50 meter drop. These coasters are all going over the top. Exceptionally well done, extreme. Uh, something you would only get to experience from a video game. And that is the glory of Planet Coaster. We get to see and uh, experience things that you just can't in real life. Not only that, Nobody's going to dare uh, fill up a city with coasters. Um, we are uh, launching already. Yeah, look at all their arms. Let's go.
I think my favorite part of this experience so far is the hidden surprises. You know, a lot of the times it's what you see is what you get. When I get the B-roll and show you guys the different areas and, you know, give you a little bit of a, a sneak peek teaser in the introduction of what's to come. Very rarely is there more hidden discoveries along the way. Yeah, maybe we have the dark ride tucked off in the corner, a shooting ride or something like that. But a lot of these coasters so far bring you a little bit deeper to something that you don't see on the surface. And I really like that. Wow. Again, transformative experience at both day and night, and I've, I'm, I'm definitely appreciating and liking that aspect of this park. And to iterate on my previous point a little bit more, I when I was loading up this park or looking through the screenshots to see if this is something that would be interesting to me and something that I think that would be interesting for you guys to kind of experience with me as a video, as an episode, uh, everything about it was like, oh, this is unique. It's interesting it's something i've never seen before i'm very intrigued i want to i want to dive deeper and as we open up the experience and we go even deeper i like how there's more reserved for us to discover as we embark deeper into the experience and as i was saying that there's a transformative uh, atmosphere between both day and night there's also a transformative atmosphere from what you see on the outside to what you get on the ride experience. Everything you see is really nice on the outside, but there's always like a hidden gem. Every ride so far has had a hidden gem, a secret area, an Easter egg, um, something kind of to wow you. And I like that because now it has me thinking like, what's what, do we, what, what, what can we expect on this coaster? It has me guessing, it has me on my toes. As we're going through this experience, having me on the edge of my seat for every single ride and attraction is very very hard to accomplish and I love it so far. So we got about a kilometer of track length, 10 airtime counts on this bad boy and the biggest drop is about 43 meters. For nighttime, we're riding the back and uh, let's see what we got going on here. Some fantasy music of sorts. Uh, let's go.
Wow. While that may be probably the shortest coaster with the least amount of thematic action moments uh, compared to the other ones that we've experienced so far, that is only when comparing it to the other ones so far. I think if you were to compare this to any RMC from any other park that we've visited in the past, it's actually kind of over the top and ridiculous if you think about it. Uh, one of the hardest coasters to integrate into theming because of the crazy wild and wacky supports, the steel top of it all. But everywhere we go on this experience, we're wrapping over buildings, under bridges, over top of stuff. Look at the integration there as it wraps around and touches the tops of all this. Uh, it's pretty crazy. Actually, really wild design on that. And I definitely appreciate that. And that is what we consider probably one of the most standard coasters in this park. And uh, it, it's pretty over the top. And a beautiful sign here too at the uh, Dragon Flight. Beautifully well done. Fantastic experience there. Love it. Uh, looks like this is our Junior Dragon that I was looking for. And even that, as a family coaster, seems to be probably, I'm going to guess, a kilometer in length that takes you around uh, the entire fantasy area. The Junior Dragon. There it is. Uh, that's pretty uh, exciting right there. I love a good Junior. Junior Dragon. Junior Wendigo. Look at this. All right. So I'm really curious to find out the stats on the junior. Almost a kilometer in length. Yeah, nothing is falling short in this park. Uh, I wanted to mention that, like, I'm looking at my recording before editing. We're sitting at about uh, 46 minutes. Basically, I've spent little to almost no time walking around the park and talking like I normally do. Uh, I am uh, going to have to mute Discord. Somebody is blooping me. And uh, yeah, I've spent little to no time actually like walking around talking about the aesthetics. I mean, I have, but it's just been ride after ride after ride after ride. It's the coasters are so long. They're so crazy. They're so over the top uh, in duration that they've taken up majority of the episode. So this is just like a, a coaster uh, fiesta, <laughs> if you will. This is crazy. I love it. Good times. All right. Great atmosphere, uh, or not amb uh, ambience. Pretty much every ride has had some music re relative to the theme that really sets the tone, sets the mood. And uh, yeah, no shortage there. Really liking what I'm seeing here. Or what I'm hearing. <laughs> Little Hollywood Hills side up there, urban fantasy. Incredible. Again, really over the top, exaggerated. I mean, we're going at max speeds of 60 miles per hour on a gentle, family-friendly coaster. And uh, that is just great. The theming of it all, the atmosphere, uh, nothing is left to be desired. Just incredible. Oh. 
Love the size of these fantasy buildings too. Just the scope and scale of everything is just ridiculous. What's going on up here? I guess we could just wrap around if we want. Mm-hmm. Giant cathedrals. I love the rock work here. That's looking really nice. A second entrance to the park, looks like. Um, oh, that was the coaster that we queued up for that I was like, oh, why is the queue on the back end? Yeah, okay. So now... Oh, there's... Oh, interesting. We got Thailand over here. Uh, I was going to say we're going to the pirate area now, but we are in fact going to Thailand. I saw a really nice shot. We had the uh, coaster wrapping around the waterfall, which we previously went on. So I don't know what to expect for rides and attractions over here, but I wouldn't mind going down here and getting a little bit of a view of what's going on here. Look at this. Wow. That is amazing. And if I fast forward it... Whoa, slow it down. Whoa! Coaster rips through, gets wet from the uh, spinning kraken and the waterfalls. Oh. Uh, Mekong River. I'm assuming it's a river rapids. But to my surprise yet again, this park is always kind of revealing its secrets as we go a little bit deeper. I'm assuming it's going to be an indoor underground river rapids. Possibly? Because uh, as I was looking around the park getting the shots and stuff for the introduction, I don't remember seeing... Okay, no, I remember getting a shot of a log flume. But the, it was just like one little area. So we have a bit of a dark ride log flume that I think majority of the experience should be indoors, which is actually pretty exciting. Yeah, the Mekong River, 555 meters in length. Uh, I don't know if this is the one that we're looking for. This guy, we wanna do the pop-up view. Off we freaking go.
Okay, I was wrong. Majority of the experience was, in fact, outside, but it was so tucked off in the back corners of the jungles of Thailand there. We had a little bit of an Aztec temple, some pretty cool stuff there. And uh, it was uh, like three or four giant splashdown moments. That lift hill was massive and you really uh, utilized the splashdowns along the way that definitely made one for getting wet, for making a big splash. Uh, quite a cool area that you've made back here at the very back corners of the park. I didn't really uh, ex uh, expect it to be this expansive and this explorative. This area can almost get completely completely missed. It's so uh, hidden at the back here, but pretty incredible. All right, now we get to go to the Pirates Pier. It was uh, the very beginning. We had the Pirates versus the Steampunks. Which team are you on? And I chose Team Pirate, so I'm expecting big things out of this. The Pirate Village. Do we go on in here? Oh, we have a queue of sorts. I think we're going back tonight. Lots of uh, switching from day to night in this experience today. Wow. There goes the music. Love it. And we have a spinning wild mouse coaster. All right, what do we got going on here? About 500 meters in length. The biggest drop is eight meters. A very mild, probably the most mild experience in the entire park, even compared to that of the junior coaster, uh, which this is like kind of what you expect from a spinning mouse. I personally don't like these things, uh, especially when they're pretty high up and they get going fast. The more mild, the better. Let's go. Wow, look how, uh, Incredibly well lit that fire ship is up there. That is remarkable. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, for me, I really like the nighttime experience on that. Goes to show how uh, crazy the lighting is in this area. But look at the shantiness of this pirate area. Sensational. I'm really excited. Can we explore, climb this tower? Oh, this is the pirate ship. I want to go up there. <laughs> but unfortunately, I think it's just the Giga Coaster that takes us up there. I, it would be extremely difficult to actually create a path system that lets you explore that. But part of me wants to like go on a drop tower or experience it some way or another. Did we go on this? What is this? What's, oh, that's the down, what's down below Fantasy Coaster. That is the pirate area. A little bit underwhelming, even though the atmosphere and the, I guess the whole look of it all is very over the top. Kind of wish there was one more coaster or attraction to experience that uh, pirate area a little bit more or if that spinning ride went and wrapped around this that would have been pretty crazy as well but in, i guess that is uh for the experience of the giga coaster that we went on earlier and then there's old town up here which we didn't really get a good look at love all these row buildings and there's the coaster diving down yeah the uh presence the overtop presence of the park is something to uh, really behold it's it's really really cool
Look at this. I mean, captivating vistas everywhere we turn, really over the top theming. And uh, as mentioned earlier, the park kind of reveals a little bit more and more, but I think we've explored the whole park now, which is um, kind of not surprising. I thought this, when I first opened it up, if you look at the size of the park to that of the ones we've explored, it technically is a bit of a mini park. And I feel like that experience is a lot longer than what I would expect from a park this size. Looking at the recording, we're running at about an hour now, and that would be the length of, you know, some parks that are twice the size in, in some cases. So just a lot of navigating through these streets, a lot to look at, and the rides themselves were very, very long, right? That we really got to soak up the theme park and experience the theme park a lot longer than what we would normally from a park this size because the rides themselves were such crazy over the top experiences with such high durations. Um, in parks that I visited that there that were this size, and actually, I, do I? No, I don't have the uh, comparison. I wanted to compare it to some of our blueprint contests, but um, yeah, parks that we visited that this size generally have coasters that are like 300 meters, 500 meters. All of these were like one to two kilometers and even more on on uh, some of like the giga coasters and stuff so uh you can make a small park go a long way and have a lot more content when you're doing these over the top coaster experiences and then the that's really hard to accomplish when you have so much stuff in the way like how do you run a coaster through here when you have a, a billion buildings to navigate in and around and between and under and over but that is kind of like the brilliance of this park and how it's so unique constructed is that everything is tied together in one giant spaghetti ball like I said earlier this is like if reality became a theme park and I love that concept it's really really crazy so before we end things off I just want to make sure uh, I've hit all the, the coasters so I'm gonna go through this ride list I did miss this the city whip but it's just a little indoor flat ride kind of fun all right, that is in fact all of the rides and attractions. Let's uh, give you guys a bird's eye view of the whole park at nighttime. Look how fantastically lit this all is. A really great concept from Branjo. I think I've ranted and raved about it enough, like just taking that uh, idea of an uh, urban city and then plankifying it or themifying it and just elaborating on it. And now I'm, I'm really curious to see if anyone else can come up with some, some sort of concept where you start from a base and add theme mean to that base everywhere we go it's city but there has been an it's been elevated it's been uh themed to something else and even the the sci-fi area of the city which it kind of seems non-existent here is actually down below here in the underworld and i thought that was a really fun surprise and speaking on that again look how much is constructed down below um not what you see is not always what you get with these theme park experiences. You even know I was talking about the size of this park being a little bit on the smaller side, but the content, which was much on the larger side, that you can't always judge a book by its cover because there's sometimes hidden secrets like this park had. And that was kind of my favorite aspect of this entire experience was going on a coaster, expecting a certain experience and coming off, uh, coming out of it with a a different experience than what I uh, thought I was gonna have and a much better one at that. So lots of fun, unique surprises, hidden areas, great underground experiences, over the top, so, like nothing I've ever seen before. Uh, really, really outstanding work on this one and making that urban city theming or just like the layout actually work the guests are walking around the streets everywhere we go it's feeling very bustling it's feeling like a city it all looks and feels like it belongs and i think that's very hard to conceptually construct if you've ever tried placing down a few buildings in this game with roads and sidewalks you'll quickly find out how difficult it is to make it all look and feel natural and still have sight lines and interesting things to look at in the background focal points and and landmarks it's it's not an easy task and then you mix that in with all this rock and nature and beaches and all this different stuff and you start to have a, a really complicated task at hand and i think branjo pulled it off absolutely incredibly so good job to branjo on this one what did you guys think of this experience and why my favorite coaster and why i wanted to point that out it was the underground one I, that one really had me over the pink penguin the pink penguin incorporated is gonna be my favorite but i also really really enjoyed 
this giga coaster uh diving through all of these themes going super high up it's definitely uh a second a very very close second but that pink penguin one had me for surprise the whole sci-fi underworld was really really cool so those are going to be the highlights of my experience today what were the highlights of your experience and why let me know down in the comments below and also let branjo know what you thought of their creation uh as i'm sure they would love to hear your thoughts boom so there it is ladies and gentlemen that was uh what was the name of this park <laughs> That was Urban Fantasy created by Branjo. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you all have a absolutely wonderful day. Bye now.